Greetings, comrades. After a few years in early access, as of May 16th, Harat has been released in full. So today, we're going to take a look at it. So grab your popcorn, hammer, and sickle, and let's see if this game is able to do the 90s justice. But before we hop into the game, please consider subscribing to the channel. Alright, thanks. Now let's begin. At first blush, Rot, aka Communist Quake, looks like it was made over 25 years ago. If I knew nothing about the game before playing it, it would not take much to convince me it was made in the glory days of old. So we're off to a good start. The story of Rot takes place in 1986 Soviet-controlled Czechoslovakia, where a dark and terrifying disaster has taken place and it's up to us to defend our socialist homeland. As a proud holder of the Military Readiness Badge, we venture out into this monochromatic world to purge the land of strange invaders with nothing more than a broken gas mask and our trusty pistol. Rot is the solo project of Czech developer this guy. They actually developed their own engine for the game to imitate software style rendering with unfiltered textures and polygon jitter. The feat of coding an engine from scratch is honestly impressive, but can it mimic the gameplay of the 90s boomer shooter genre? That's a question I always ask myself when playing these types of games, and in short, I think Rot does. It follows the classic shooter playbook pretty well, with fast movement, a classic arsenal, twisting levels, and plenty of unique enemies to slaughter. However, Rot also features feels contemporary and fresh, and I think this is largely in part to its unique and downright bizarre sense of humor, but we'll touch on that in a little bit. If you grew up playing the shooters of old, or you just simply enjoy the boomer shooter genre today, Rot will fit nicely into your gaming library. The game has 3 episodes and 26 levels. All in all, you can beat the game pretty quickly, but changing the difficulty level higher or chasing achievements can slow things down significantly. Regardless, I personally feel the amount of content is fair for the price point and Rot also includes four horde-based endless mode maps for those who want a different type of challenge. Rot's level design is some of the best I've seen in this age of resurging 90 style games. There are large open combat arenas where circle strafing shines, horror inducing dark corridors reminiscent of dusk, secrets galore, and the occasional monster closet rooms. I would not say the levels feel like doom mazes, but they are sprawling and complex. Yet somehow, despite all of the winding paths and corridors, the design always brings you to where you need to be when you need to find a key or trigger a progression event. I feel like the developer has really studied what makes great level design great and has implemented it flawlessly into Rot. Whether intended or not, the environments tip their hats to build engine games with a bunch of cool stuff you can interact with. Russian nesting dolls, a boombox, and even a working piano. Bonus points if you can tell me in the comments where this song is from. There's motorized scooters you can drive around, and you can even pet some doggies. Much of what you can interact with ties into the bizarre sense of humor I've told you about. Nazi newts, a battle against the Rat King, recipes at the end of an episode instead of a story, and much, much more. Despite not taking itself seriously, the level design of this game is top shelf, and there's not much I can be negative about, other than some cosmetic stuff that I'll talk about soon. Other than a few modern lighting and fire effects, Rot is pure retro. The textures are jittery and pixelated everything feels jagged, boxy, and full of angular polygons. If I had no prior knowledge of this game, I might be fooled into thinking it was a Soviet-themed mod for Quake or Dusk. In fact, if you would have told me this game was an expansion pack or DLC of Dusk, I would have believed it. As I mentioned in my review of Dusk, that game was inspired by the Stalker games set in Ukraine, and you could really see those influences. The same goes for Rot, again proving that the developer really has paid attention to what has made other boomer shooters so great before it. The game's Soviet theme is really well executed, with Stalinist architecture and concrete structures that have been converted into pixelated quake-like levels, and it gives the game a very tangible feeling. The developer claims that many of their levels are based on real places, and I can totally see that being the case. However, despite it being rooted in reality, we are still transported to someplace otherworldly in this game due to an evil-looking sky, bizarre horror-like enemies, and this rocket man. Yet despite its influences, Rot still feels unique. Yet unfortunately for me, the interesting setting is overshadowed by a monochromatic palette of brown. Brown rooms, brown apartments, brown concrete structures, brown sewers, and even the 50 plus enemies this game boasts are mostly all brown. 
except for the Harambe boss. I have a feeling that the brownness of Rot has become a bit of a meme in the community as many Steam reviews point out how brown this game is, and even the developer acknowledges it in the game's Steam page description. The problem I have with all the brown is that, as good as the level design is, they really start to blur together because you're going to see the same shades of brown and tan no matter where you go. This issue is compounded by what it seems to be a limited gallery of textures that are also used repeatedly. Honestly, I had trouble navigating certain areas, and if it was not for some key pieces of architecture, all the levels kind of just blended together. Now while brown fits as the primary color of this dystopian game, I feel the developer needed to throw something else at us here and there. Splashes of muted colors to give us some visual variety. Hints of these different colors, more texture variety, and more contrasting brown tones would go a long way to help both level navigation and eye fatigue, which I actually experienced and blame on the brownness of this game. While the developer appears to be a student of level design, I urge them to also study texturing and color. Even muted games like Quake and Dusk that have a ton of brown accent their levels with greens, red, and blues. These games also have a ton of texture variety as well. And as a former texture artist for Disney Studios, I am not trying to bash the art style of this game, I am simply trying to provide some constructive feedback. Now with that said, I will say when writing the script for this video, I had not played the third episode yet. After playing it, the developer most definitely incorporated more colors into the level design. I don't know if this is from community feedback or personal choice, but it was a breath of fresh air and it made this episode stand out in my opinion. From an artistic perspective, the third episode of Rot was easily the best to look at. This game's arsenal will feel familiar to FPS fans. A pistol that can be dual wielded, a standard variety shotgun, and submachine gun will be your primary weapons. Then when you get the super shotgun and rocket launcher, you will feel like a Soviet doom slayer. Also taking a page out of Quake 2's book, you will have grenades that are highly effective as well as landmines that can create some interesting setups. There are also some more secret guns that you can play with, but these don't really show up very often, especially if you weren't secret hunting. There are also some interesting choices in armor pickups, like coins and gold and these undies in a tank top. But from a game that has horses wearing latex gas masks, armored undies seem perfectly normal. The boss fights in Rot are actually some of the best I've seen in a boomer shooter so far. And while they don't do anything we haven't really seen before, and your goal is always to whittle down the health bar, there is some decent variety in these fights. And these bosses will keep you constantly moving to avoid your demise. Now I'm going to give you a quick spoiler warning here. I'm going to show you a clip of the final boss as it was a very fun fight and honestly maybe one of my favorite shooter boss fights to date. So if you don't want to see a clip of this fight, please pause the video now and use the chapter selection to skip ahead. As for the rest of the enemies in this game, they don't really break the mold and are nothing we haven't really seen before. However, I really did enjoy the variety in character design and each enemy does have their own mechanics that make them feel unique. But unfortunately, these enemies do come with some janky jumping and they all will die instantly if they fall in water, which is kind of awkward. Otherwise, the enemies play like any other enemy in a game like this. Despite my heavy-handed critique of this game's brown art style, there is really not much about Rot that I can complain about. The game plays smoothly with no frame drops over unique levels that are arguably this game's best feature. Rot has familiar and consistent gunplay with quick and responsive movement that feels just like the games of old. And with a healthy weapon arsenal, you take on enemies that are memorable and balanced. The developer clearly understands what fans of this genre want in a nostalgic game like this. I highly recommend Rot. It is only 20 
$20 on Steam and in my opinion worth every penny. Please go support a solo dev who developed their own impressive gaming engine and check this game out. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving me a like and subscribing to the channel. Let me know if you played Rot. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below. I'm Salty Octopus and I will see you next time.